Pleased to meet you, Rangers. Welcome, Rangers. I'm Marshal Darius Kwan, and this here's Sergei Gretzky. Good to meet you, Rangers. Glad to see some friendly faces. Been rough around here these last few days. Dorsey's attacked us, too. Snuck inside Colorado Springs and killed a lot of people. Situation's under control now. Mostly. The Patriarch. Thank God they never got near him. He's the only thing keeping Colorado from tearing itself apart. And sorry about these alarms. Something must have triggered the old security system. Trouble is, there's a bunch of angry robots guarding the computer that shuts them off. How you deal with them is your call. Your base. Your rules. Yeah, weird, huh? They weren't active when we looked the place over a few days back, but... Duh! Let's talk after you kill the alarms. I can hardly hear myself think. Well done, Rangers. Good to see the place up and running. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. The reason you're here. As you may know, I have a daughter and two sons. Liberty, Valor, and Victory. Two of them conspired against me, and the third blackens the Buchanan name with every breath he takes. Consequently, I banished them. They've been skulking in the shadows ever since, but lately there's been rumors that I'm on my last legs. Lies, of course, but apparently my dear children believe them, and they've started making new plans. Protection? You think I need protection? Stop trying to be smart and listen. I'm not worried about my children defeating me, Rangers. They won't. Not even Liberty. What worries me is the destruction they'll wreak as they fail. They'll tear my land and my people to shreds. They'll burn everything I've accomplished to ash. That's why they have to be stopped before they can start. That's why you, Rangers, have to find them and bring them home to me ASAP. And when I say bring them home, I mean bring them home alive. They're my blood. Kill them and we'll have a problem. Do I make myself clear? You've already done the impossible by making it here. I trust you. 
find a way to make it possible. Now, let me tell you where they are. Victories hold up in Aspen, Valors under the protection of the Gippers in Denver, and Liberty's raising an army against me somewhere out on the Eastern Plains. Anything else you need to know? What do you want to know? Divided loyalty, that's why. I trust my guards, but they don't leave my side. Ever. Everybody else... Everybody else is making plans for when I'm gone. The Hundred Families, the Gippers, the Marshals, they're all out for themselves. And they know my kids would make good figureheads, give them some legitimacy. Any Coloradan I send to bring Vic, Val, and Libby back home might think they'll get a better deal elsewhere. But not you. I'm the only one who can save your people. Nobody else can get supplies to Arizona before they starve to death. That's why it's you who's doing this. You've got the only loyalty that works. The loyalty of self-interest. Hmm. Boy's never been right in the head. Since he was a baby, he'd torture cats, terrorize the servants, set the house on fire, and he's only got worse. The things he's done to the women he finds. Anyway. I finally had enough and put the little monster under house arrest up in Aspen. Guess they weren't prepared, because he escaped a while ago and then came back with a gang of freaks and turned the place into a slaughterhouse. Now he's on the radio, laughing about what he's gonna do to his hostages and daring me to come after him. He, uh... Claims he's captured some rangers as well. And if he does, you're still bringing him home alive no matter what, remember? <sighs> Soft, spoiled. Fiddled with computers all day instead of learning the arts of diplomacy and war. Finally packed him off when he accidentally crashed my security systems right before his sister's little coup attempt. Made him my official ambassador to the Gippers, hoping he'd do to their systems what he'd done to mine. That was a mistake. He took his revenge by convincing them to cut off oil shipments to my city. No oil means no heat, no light, and no food for my people. So getting Valor back and resuming oil shipments from the Gippers has to happen now. Crazy cultists worship an old U.S. president as a god. Trouble is, they're the only ones who know how to refine oil anymore, so we gotta play nice. Liberty's got more brains and cunning than both her brothers put together. She's the only one who could actually run Colorado. Problem is, she'd run it as a goddamn slave state. Everyone in chains. Everyone working for her. Wouldn't worry about her for now, though. Best to wait until you got a little more firepower. She's gonna be well protected. She's already tried once. Got all the way to the palace steps before we chased her off. She's been licking her wounds out east ever since. You'd better. Anything else? Of course. Now, if you want a chance to impress me, maybe get a little payback. That call I got outside was from Sheriff Daisy, the head of the Marshals in Colorado Springs. 
She's having trouble rousting some Dorseys who have been holed up in the Garden of the Gods since their raid fell apart. Why don't you go give her a hand? Show us what the Rangers can do. Enjoy yourselves, Rangers. Just don't get killed. I want a return on my investment. All right, let's move out. Rangers, come talk to me when you've got a moment. I want to discuss staffing and recruiting, that kind of thing. Good job, Rangers. Nice to be able to hear ourselves think again. And now that it's quiet enough to talk, let me reintroduce you to the great Sergei Gretzky, who's going to be helping you with personnel. Hi again, Rangers. Damn sorry about your people. But now that you're here, we'll do what we can to get you back on your feet and find you some new recruits, just like the Patriarch promised you. And I already got you one of the best. Meet Marcelo Gonzalez, electronics wizard, radio technician, and former dispatcher for the Marshals. He'll be your radio operator. Howdy, Rangers. Uh, while you were dealing with the alarms, I took the liberty of installing a combat AI in your vehicle. Should help you out. If you want to chat, I'll be in the operations room getting things up and running. Should be more recruits arriving soon. Ready to tell me how you want to fill out your squad? My advice is to put together a squad with complementary skills. Nobody can be great at everything. So pick recruits who are good at things your current team isn't. And you can always round out your squad with folks you meet along the way. Keep that in mind when you're choosing from the recruits I've rounded up. Listen, I can get you all the fighting troops you need, but if you meet any talented people in your travels, don't hesitate to sign them up. Now that we've got that sorted, let's talk about the next steps. Now you're the boss here, so I'm not going to tell you what to do, but getting this place up and running wouldn't be a bad place to start. That means surveying the base and finding specialists to staff it. Perfect. 
That'll give you a chance to see if any of the junk around here is worth keeping before I toss it all out. After that, you might want to give Sheriff Daisy a hand. If you impress her, maybe she'll hook you up with some specialist for the base. Anyway, your call. Colorado Springs is straight out the main gate. If you want to go to Denver or Aspen, just hop back in your car and go out the way you came in. Uh, well? Haha. <laughs> Sergey won't blow his own horn, so I'll do it for him. He's Colorado's greatest war hero fought by the Patriarch's side from the beginning and saved the old man's life about a hundred times, right, Sergei? Seventy-five. Tops. Now, let me tell you about Mr. Slick here. Nobody knows the streets and alleys of Colorado Springs or the people that live there better than dashing Darius Kwan. You're too kind, Sergei. Not sure exactly. We came by a week and a half ago and it was stone quiet. We were gonna get the place cleaned up before you got here. But then the Dorseys attacked the city, so it got put on the back burner. Something must have triggered the security systems between then and now. Could have been anything. Patriarch chased out the last big gang maybe 10 years back. Before that, all kinds of bandits, militias, and cults have lived here since the deluge. Recently, it's been mostly outlaws and refugees. We should check around to see if there are any current occupants. Could be what set off the alarms. Around these parts, we call the nuclear apocalypse the deluge of fire. Because, well, that's what it was. Noah's flood was the deluge of water. The nukes were the deluge of fire. Uh, one sec. Forgive me for saying so, but I'm guessing you folks are gonna need as much help in the field as you will here in HQ. So, what if I joined your squad? At least until you find your feet. Great, I'm at your disposal. Lead the way. <coughs> Please, don't shoot. Who... Who are you? You're not dressed like the marshals. I'm Del Hackett, and I... Well, I, I speak for these people. We've been living here for months, and... We've got nowhere to go. Please, will you let us stay? Bad idea. I've been in their shoes, but this is a military base. If we have squatters everywhere, it'll be hard to keep discipline. Your recruits won't like it either. The Patriarch's people don't care about people like us. But you're not beholden to them. We all farmed in the border country between Colorado and the Plains. Thought we were safe out there, under the Patriarch's protection. Back then, the gangs feared the Patriarch. <laughs> Not anymore. They burned our greenhouses and killed everyone who tried to fight them. No place left to run but here, for any of us. Not intentionally. The Patriarch's people drove up to the base a few days ago, so we hid in here for a while. Then when Andy went to check if they left, all the doors slammed shut and the alarms started whooping. Don't know what happened. Been living in these ruins for weeks and we never set anything off before. 
We're not welcome there. They already have too many mouths to feed. And more are always coming. Your call. Won't make the volunteers happy, but the Patriarch put you in charge, not them. You said... yes. Uh, well, I was sure you wouldn't. We won't be any trouble, I promise, and, and we'll help out wherever we can. <sighs> Thank you for giving us a chance. Oh, and uh, one of our people is missing. Andy. If you find him hiding out somewhere, you send him back to us? Hear that, everyone? We gotta make ourselves useful around here. Hi. Well, what's up? Haven't seen you before, have I? Rangers, huh? Cool, man. Cool. I, uh, like your look. I think I had a shirt like that once a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Uh, headquarters for what? That's cool. Helping's good. I like helping. Uh, are there like more of you here? Oh, so not many then, huh? Don't worry. You'll make new friends, I bet, though. <laughs> you, uh, you seem real friendly and nice. Hey, what, uh, what? Oh, yeah, man, of course. I don't, I, I don't mind. Ask me whatever. My name? Uh, yeah, ah, uh, Ned. Ned? Harry. Nick? Booger? Dickens? Something like that. Honestly, I don't, you know, remember. Been a long time since I thought about that, man. 
been a longer time since someone uh, asked me about it. I, I kind of been here for a while. Couldn't tell you, man. Couldn't tell you. Like, there's no windows or clocks in here, you know? Hard to keep track of when the day, uh, when the day starts or ends. Anyway, a long time. Long enough for other groups, uh, other people to come and go. Yeah, sure, uh, maybe. Sometimes, like, a guy might come in, but I don't know if he was connected to the guy who came in before him, you know? Kinda, kinda hard to keep track of how long it is between visits. And people don't always tell me what's going on outside. But, uh, let me see. Last guy who came in to see me was the dead guy. Before him, tired eyes lady. Before her, this smiling woman. Before that, it's a little fuzzy. Oh man, that's uh, that's some wild stuff. So a while ago, that dead guy over there came running in here, all nervous and uh, freaked out. Starts messing with that uh, computer machine over there. And yeah, then there's this big ass flash of light from the computer machine, and he falls down, and then all these uh, sirens and flashing lights. It was horrible, man. Like, it made it really hard to sleep, you know? Then after a while, the alarm stopped, and then, uh, well, you came in. Well, she was, uh, she was a woman, dressed all raggedy, but, uh, I'm one to talk on that. <laughs> anyway, she came in here looking sad. Eyes looked like she hadn't, uh, hadn't seen a good night's rest in years. We talked, um, for a bit, and then she left again. Sometimes I think I can still hear her voice. Hope she didn't die and she's haunting me for some reason. Though, now that I think about it, I guess I'd be glad for company, you know? Oh, a real nice lady, man. Had a big old smile on her face the whole time we talked. Just never stopped smiling. I think she said she was a traitor. Talked about how she had some merchandise to keep here and some people she was going to deal with. Said I wasn't uh, a suitable client, which, sure, because uh, I got no money. Well, actually, she said I wouldn't be suitable for her clients, which I thought was a weird way to, uh, to say that. You know, man, it's, um, I've been here a long time, and I, and I eat a lot of mushrooms. G can't always remember things that happened in the, uh, olden days, but uh, I'll try. There was, there was, um, there was a gentleman bear, the lip licker, and, uh, the bloody screamers, and, uh, and them metal fellers, and... The really white guy and owl, uh, owl face. Oh, and the six wee men and the lion. But, uh, yeah, hard to remember who came in first and, uh, which ones were just a nursery rhyme my grandma told me, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. You know, man, I, uh, I got everything I need in here to keep on. Little, uh, little crack in the ceiling over there drips some water. So I just gotta, uh, lick the wall when I'm thirsty. 
And, uh, you know what they say about dark, damp spaces, man? Mushroom go there, man. <laughs> so I added a little self, uh, self-made fertilizer. Those mushrooms are growing good. Yeah, man, yeah. Yum, yum. Oh, yeah, and, uh, bugs, when they come by. Buzzy crunchers and climby snappers and skittery two bites and running gushers. Sometimes roly poppers and hoppy specks. Once a squirmy slurp. That was a good day, man. But yeah, mainly mushrooms. Because, uh, the cell door is locked. <laughs> Oh, man, didn't you like my joke? Okay, okay, like, well, so a guy I used to be friends with, well, I guess he was more of a, more of a business partner. Friend, though, too, man, like, former friend who decided he didn't, uh, want to go splitsies anymore, so he, uh, he conked me on the head. And when I woke up, um, I, I was in here, Real bummer, man. Like, seriously. I told you, man. Thought he was my friend, you know? But, uh... But he was... Oh, uh... Didn't, uh... Didn't we talk about this already? So a while ago, that dead guy over there... Yeah, then there's this big-ass flap. Then after a while, the alarm stopped, and then, uh, Well, you came in. While those, uh, those alarms were going off? How'd that happen? Well, that guy, uh, he fell over onto the computer machine after the flash. Maybe he landed on, uh, on the buttons, or on the thing with all the little buttons. Or, oh, oh, shit, man. Do you think someone snuck in here while I was sleeping and fiddled with those buttons? A prowler lurking about? That's, um... Uh, some scary stuff, man. Yikes. Oh, yum. Mushrooms are the best, man. So, uh, so many flavors. And they grow every, uh, everywhere and grow easy. I love them. Who knew they were poisonous ones? <laughs> Yes, please. Very much. Uh, your call on this one, Rangers, but really, I just let nature take its course here, if you know what I mean. I'd, uh, I'd really, really, really like to get out of here. Really. Cool, cool. I, I get it, man. No pressure, but uh, I sure appreciate it. So, uh, so long. Good people, Rangers. We'll find a way to pay you back. Anything you need? Sure.
Andy may have. He's the only one of us who knew computers. I told him to stay out of there because I was afraid of, well, of, of something like what happened when this whole place got locked down. We stay away from that awful room. Nothing but death in there. Yep. There was a man locked in there when we moved in. Living off insects and mushrooms in his cell. I... Well, I... I left him locked up after I met him. I... I felt bad about that. He was cordial enough, but... Ugh. He just kept asking questions that felt... Off. And those glassy eyes. Booby traps, mostly. One of my people disarmed an explosive on a door, but missed a gas mine under the floor panel on the other side. She was vomiting for a week. Almost died. I told everyone to avoid the room after that. No one here is worth losing over whatever guns may or may not be in there. Poked my head in there and saw a giant robot next to a dead body. Hard pass. We first got into the base through a hole in the archive room's wall. Some critters living in there chased us around, but we managed to shut them in before anyone got seriously hurt. We've been trying to snare them for a while for fresh meat, but they just chew through the ropes like they're Sour Patch Kids. Careful out there. It's an uncaring world. I wish more folks were like you, Rangers. man i owe you big uh real big time this won't be the last time you hear from me <laughs> thanks for uh the assistance i uh i owe you big time Get this cleaned out, you can put your truck in here.
What a stink. Somebody's been using this med bay for a morgue, then I take an ocean bleach to get it ready for customers. Thank you. 